What is going on everybody, it's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're gonna be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're gonna be talking about two trades that I made today on the 13th of February in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I personally see value in for these next couple of days. So for everybody out there that finds value in these videos, you do enjoy the content here on YouTube, feel free to hit that like button. It really does help the channel grow, and I appreciate every single one of you guys for doing so. And if you guys want to be connected on a further basis, feel free to join our free Discord group chat as well as our free Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. So without further ado, guys, let's talk about what ended up happening today. Today, the market just closed, as you guys heard from the ding, 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 the SPX, the S&P 500 index, the 500 largest U.S. traded companies ended up closing the day up around $7.15 up around 0.26% on the day. The Dow Jones ended up closing the day up around 102 points, up 0.4%. And the NASDAQ actually ended up closing the day green, down around $3, and it's continuing to push down due to this being the future. Now we're down about $2, and this is mostly because the tech stocks today, as you can see down here, or you probably can't see it because my face is right there, but the tech stocks were pretty weak today and the nasdaq is a heavy tech index and obviously guys with tech stocks some of the biggest companies out there being weak the nasdaq is going to be weak for the day so starting out here Let's talk about what ended up happening today in the SPX. And for those of you guys that have been watching my videos for a while, you know, and of course, if you've been watching the stock market for a while, you know that the year of 2019 has been absolutely amazing so far, right? We bottomed out towards the end of 2018, and we're up nearly 15% on this index just in about a month and a half, right? 15% in just a month and a half is absolutely amazing. And in particular, these past 20 days, roughly three weeks, I would say, maybe even four weeks, actually no, three weeks, we've been trading in this channel that we've been covering on this YouTube channel over these past couple of weeks We've been trading in this, right? And we can tell that this is a channel based off these red trend lines that we see here, right? The clear resistance is at the top of this channel here and the clear support at the bottom here, right? We've been trading picture perfect in this channel pretty much over these past three weeks. And what did we say in yesterday's video, guys? I was talking about how there's more potential for us to continue to push up and head towards the resistance of this channel in the next couple of days. And that's exactly what ended up happening today, guys, with the SPX up around $8.00. At the close of the market, we ended up pushing up more towards the resistance part of this channel. So in terms of, you know, the market movement today, guys, nothing crazy, honestly, right? We're up about 0.3%. We moved a little bit closer to the resistance of the channel. And I honestly see a couple more green days, maybe one, two more green days to get us towards that target of around 27.75 that we were talking about in yesterday's video that'll put us right at the resistance of this channel. And from there, we can go either two ways, right? We can break that channel, which is going to be a huge breakout move that could lead to more green, right? more upside or you know we could get rejected pull back a couple of days and head towards the support of this channel which we've seen done before right we've seen that happen here where we ended up pulling back right ended up heading towards the support we saw it happen here as well here as well you know whenever we see a couple of green days in a row you know it's always uh something to keep in mind that we might experience some pullback and of course we've seen about three, four trading days in a row being green. And of course, if we hit tomorrow as a green day as well, that's going to be putting us in more overbought status, more towards the top of this channel and more potential of, you know, selling off and heading down to the support of the channel. So like we mentioned in yesterday's video, guys, you know, there are two major resistances here in the SPX that we want to keep an eye on on this 184 hour chart for us to potentially test the all time highs that we saw back in the beginning of October 
at around 2940. And I'm going to ask this question again in this video. Do you guys think we're going to end up breaking these two resistances here and end up testing all-time highs in the year of 2019? What do you guys personally think about that? I would love to know. Drop a comment down below. But, you know, we can see... The resistance here is at around 2800 with the next one being at around 2815 and those two are not too far off from where we are right now. Literally, if the SPX pushes up another 45, 50 points, we're going to be right at this resistance, right? And of course, another 20 points, we're going to be above that second resistance, pushing up and potentially testing that all-time high at around 2940. So what do you guys think? My personal opinion, guys, I do think we're going to end up pulling back a little bit in these next couple of days to bring that RSI down a little bit, especially since we are towards the resistance of that channel. So just like the SPX guys, the Dow Jones, today, very solid green day, up around 0.5%. It's been up around 15% from the bottoming out point back in December of 2019, or 2018 rather. And from there, guys, we've been bullish as heck, right? We all know this by now, the Dow, the SPX, the NASDAQ, absolutely insane in the year of 2019. And if we take a look here on the 20-day, one-hour chart, guys, very similar to the SPX, right? We can see we're trading in this channel over these past couple of weeks very nicely. Let me actually redraw this channel because I did kind of butcher it there for you guys. And for those of you all that don't know how to draw a channel, it's very simple. You go up here to drawings, drawing tools, you go right here and you hover over it a little bit. It says channel, click that, right? And then you'll be able to do it very simply here. So we can see, you know, this channel has been very valid over these next couple, uh, or over these past couple of weeks, rather. And based on this channel, we could potentially be pushing up maybe to the 25,800 to the 25,900 level in terms of the Dow Jones, putting us right at that resistance. So in yesterday's video, we were talking about this resistance on the uh, the Dow Jones at around 25,500 because that's where we ended up closing yesterday. We obviously popped above it today, which is a good sign for the continuation of the uptrend. And the fact that we're holding it as a new support is a very good sign as well. So keep an eye. Are we going to push green tomorrow, guys? I would love to see what your opinions are. I personally think there is some more green in store. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments section. So just like the SPX, guys, we're approaching some major resistances here in terms of the Dow Jones as well from this from these past couple of months. The first one being here at around 25,800 with the next one being at around 26,200. So these two points, they're not too far off from where we are right now. And if we have a couple of more green days, we're going to be seriously testing these resistances and potentially testing the all-time highs in the Dow Jones. So what do you guys think? Let me know down below. And a bullish move here that we are seeing is this 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA, which does signal more bullish momentum in a stock, in an ETF, in a future, in an index, whatever we are doing our technical analysis on. So keep an eye on that. That is worth noting. Let's see if it's crossing on the SPX. It probably is, right? We can see that's a bullish cross as well. And on the NASDAQ, let's take a look. We can see the NASDAQ, it has had that bullish cross a couple of weeks back in the beginning or more towards the uh, middle of January 2019. We saw that cross. And ever since there, guys, this is a living example of what this cross can mean, right? This means bullish momentum. And we can see ever since that cross, We've been pushing up very nicely in terms of the NASDAQ. And this is a, uh, you know, this is a very simple technical analysis that I personally do on longer term charts. You can do it on shorter term charts as well to identify price action and price movement in the future. And it works a lot of the time, guys. Not all the time. It doesn't mean 100% that if this crosses the stock, the ETF, the future is going up 100%. But it is a good indicator to use to judge your stocks, your trades, it's a very good way to do so in terms of price action and future momentum and future push in anything that you're trading. So in terms of the NASDAQ here, guys, we cracked 7,000 points yesterday. 
We held that level again today. Actually, did we crack it yesterday? Yes. No, no, no. We cracked it. Yes, we did crack it yesterday. We went to about 70-50 yesterday. We saw a strong uh, resistance here. We had trouble getting above it uh, this morning as well at about 70-69. Ended up selling off, and now we're testing this 7,000 support. If we're taking a look on this closer-term chart here, we're testing this support level right now in terms of the NQ. But uh, just like the other two guys on this 20-day uh, chart here, we're trading in the same exact channel. And if I can draw it out for you guys so we can see where we could potentially be going here, well, it looks like we might have already topped off at the top of this uh, channel here, right? We can see the higher high from the previous. And now we're seeing some bearish push. We see a, a double top here, meaning there could be some bearish push downwards here. And we're already seeing that with the next support being at around 7,000. And if we break that support, guys, you know, we could be selling off towards the bottom of this channel. And of course, if we break that support, on this channel that could indicate more selling to come but let's not get ahead of ourselves guys because we're still trading above the 50 sma we do see the 50 sma crossing above the 180 sma here which is a very bullish sign so just keep an eye on those levels guys but right now the main indices guys we're still trading in an uptrend we're still in this channel pushing up with no signs of a reversal quite yet so another thing to keep an eye on is the $7,100 resistance here for the NASDAQ as well as the $7,200 resistance? What do you guys think? Are we going to break these resistances? Are we going to test the all-time highs here in the NASDAQ? I would love to hear what you guys have to say. Drop a comment down below and let me know. So now to talk about what I ended up trading today, guys. I traded UWT this morning for a very quick scalp trade 1%. And for those of you guys that don't know, UWT is a crude oil-based ETF, meaning whenever crude oil is going up in price, UWT is going up in price as well. And crude oil is right here, slash CL. And we saw the big sell-off that we saw in uh that we had in crude oil a couple of days ago from $55 all the way down to around $51.50. We ended up holding that support at around $52, started to push back up, broke above the 50 SMA, and this is what I honestly wanted to see for a trade in UWT. Obviously, I didn't swing trade it from this point. If I did, I would have made a lot of money, as a lot of you guys probably would have made a lot of money as well doing that, but I ended up day trading it this morning. If we can see this one day, one minute, we saw the big push it had this morning from around 8.35 up to around, not 8.35, at 8.35 a.m. from $53 up to around $54. And that actually ended up pulling back pretty nicely, heading into uh, the close of the market, opening up another potential trade tomorrow, right? But to talk about what I ended up trading today, right, we saw the big push up here in crude oil. And what I wanted to see early on in this morning is I wanted to see a pullback before hopping into UWT on that day trade. And I was being very patient here. We ended up getting the pullback at around 9.45 a.m., 15 minutes into the market from around 13.89 all the way down to around 1371. And the fact that we were holding the higher low here from the previous, holding that 50 SMA as a support, at this point in time, I ended up taking a position and I wrote it up 1% up to around $14, I believe. I ended up getting in at like 1383, wrote it up about 1%. Up to around 1397 for a quick in and out easy scalp trade, guys. And that was pretty much my biggest trade of the day in terms of UWT. Very quick, just riding the uptrend, riding the momentum in crude oil in UWT. Very quick 10 minute trade there. And for those of you guys that watched my previous couple of videos, you saw that I was actually in Tesla until I cut my losses today when we broke that critical support that I was talking about in yesterday's video. And for those of you guys that don't recall, I was in Tesla at around $313. And at the close of the market yesterday, we were holding this 50 SMA support right here. And I was telling myself and my whole plan, you know, the whole entire trade was 
to get out of Tesla if we broke that 50 SMA. And since I am very disciplined, guys, I ended up getting out of Tesla this morning once we did sell off pretty aggressively here. And I ended up only taking about a 1.2% loss here. Cut my losses. We ended up going all the way down to around $305. And honestly, guys, I'm not going to get into Tesla again until we see a break out of this 180 SMA resistance. But just because I took a 1% loss here, guys, doesn't mean I lost more dollar value than on my day trade. And let me explain this. Whenever I'm swing trading a stock, I always add a small portion of the position in at first, right? I scale into my positions. Let's say I have a goal of taking a $15,000 position in Tesla. What scaling into that position means is I'll take, let's say, a $2,000 position at first, and then slowly add more money into it as the uptrend continues. And this way, guys, if you end up, you know, try having to cut losses, if you need to cut losses due to the stock not going your way, you're not going to lose as much money as you would have lost if you went in heavy right off the bat, let's say $10,000, and you had to cut losses, right? You guys understand what I'm saying here? It's pretty basic, right? Just scaling into your positions will help you save a ton of money, right, over the long term. You know, if I went in with $10,000 right off the bat and I took that 2% loss, I would have lost $200. But if I went in with $2,000 at first, guys, took that 2% loss, what would that be, right? That would be around, I would be losing around $40 at that point. So you guys understand the whole idea here. Scaling into your positions will help you save money over the long term if the stocks don't end up going your way, which in this case, Tesla just did not end up going my way. So I want to talk about something regarding the trade war very quickly. I'm sure a lot of you guys ended up seeing what ended up happening here. I'm pulling up my phone. Just to open up my notes very quickly and uh, just talk about this very quickly. So for all you guys that don't know, the trade war deadline is this March 1st, right? Trump and the president of China have agreed to come to an agreement by March 1st. And if they don't, right, tariffs are going to increase, which is very, very bad for the importation and the exportation, right? This is very, very bad for businesses, right? You know, bottom lines are going to be affected. And honestly, the stock market might go into crazy mayhem again if we don't come to a trade agreement by March 1st. But the interesting thing is that Trump actually stated yesterday in a meeting, I'm going to have a screenshot here of the exact quote that he said, is that, he might end up being a bit lenient with this deadline if there is a legitimate possibility of an actual trade deal forming, right? Because we've seen the news, guys, over the past couple of weeks. We've seen all this news of trade talk between Trump and China. Trade talk, there's a possible trade deal. And, you know, it's been a bunch of BS, guys. Like, I feel like they've been fluffing around. No legitimate trade deal. But the fact that Trump is saying, that he'll push the deadline back if there is a legitimate trade deal. That is a pretty um, decent sign, I guess, for the short term in terms of the stock market. Because if they don't come to a trade deal, guys, you know, the stock market is going to be affected very, very badly, in my personal opinion. What do you guys think? think. And now that we're on the topic of Tesla, did you guys ended up seeing, uh, you know, all those Model 3s that were being shipped off to China a couple days ago? Elon Musk, he's really trying to get all of these Model 3s overseas right now before this trade war uh, deadline because he was saying something like that. I was reading an article or something that Obviously, you know, if he doesn't end up getting those across and, you know, the tariffs start to, you know, rise, Tesla's going to be screwed in a big way with profit, guys. Their vehicles are going to be more expensive in China, which they're already super expensive. I read that one vehicle, right, one Tesla Model 3 is like 400,000 yuan. I can't even, uh, you know, uh, pronounce the currency, which is equivalent to $65,000 or something like that. So it's just funny because Elon Musk was trying to rush those cars over there. And hopefully, you know, they do seem like they're going to get there in time before this uh, trade deadline. And I think everything's going to end up being 
okay with uh, Tesla. But, you know, all in all, guys, it's going to be a very, very interesting next couple of weeks here in the global macro economy, guys. Not even in the U.S. economy, literally in the whole entire country with this Chinese and, uh, you know, American trade war because this truly affects a lot of different countries and, of course, a ton of different businesses. So what do you guys think about this? You know, Tesla shipping all those Model 3s, you know, the trade deadline, you know, possible leniency from Trump, you know, with the president of China, the whole trade war situation, the trade deal, you know, what is going to end up happening here, guys? Do you think we're going to come to a trade deal in the next couple of weeks? You know, I'm kind of 50-50 on the fence about it. I don't know if we're going to come to one by March 1st. You know, is Trump going to push the deadline back? You know, I'm just really excited to see what ends up happening today. So let's talk about some stocks very quickly before I do end off this video natural gas ended up getting rejected very hard today uh by that support or by the resistance rather here on the 180 four hour chart we were talking about it yesterday for a potential breakout in you guys we never ended up getting that we got rejected pretty hard and now it's honestly looking like we're going to test the low at about 254 opening up more margin in terms of D gas guys so now that we didn't break out in natural gas my shift my focus is on D gas to see are we going to be testing these lows and are we going to be pushing to lower lows so tomorrow I'm watching D gas very closely also, UWT very closely, guys, for the continuation or the potential continuation of the uptrend in crude oil. We can see UWT back to the $15 range in no time, in my personal opinion. Let's take a look and see, you know, are we going to end up breaking back into the 14s, the mid-14s, and eventually the 15s? I think it's very, very possible so let's take a look at some tech stocks very quickly here we saw apple did pretty weak today down around 71 cents we saw facebook down around nearly a dollar today it's breaking that uh 50 sma uh support here this is honestly looking like a very solid put option finally it's starting to break these technical levels that we were talking about a couple of videos back that we wanted to see for a potential put option now i might consider playing that tomorrow you know amazon is the only big tech stock that was actually green today it was only up two dollars but that's technically green netflix down down about eight dollars today you know down around 2.2 percent google down about a dollar and microsoft down about eight cents on the day so this is what really ended up dragging down the nasdaq into the red territory today is honestly all of these tech stocks not doing too great over these past couple of days so now talking about a little bit in the marijuana industry guys these marijuana stocks Cron, very strong day today, up around 4%. It's looking like we ended up finding a bottom here in Cron. So let's take a look and see if we're going to end up popping back up into the $21, $22 range and test that previous resistance. So Cron, guys, it's on my radar for tomorrow for a potential run up here. Let's see if it ends up completing that. CGC also did pretty well today, up around 5%. If we do end up breaking this 50 SMA of resistance, guys, this one could end up running back into the high 48s, maybe high 49s, maybe even back to the $50 range in terms of CGC. Let's take a look at ACB, guys, Aurora Cannabis. This, one's ended, this one ended up holding that support nicely at around $690. We broke into the $7 range here today, guys, and if we we end up breaking this 50 SMA, we can end up running back up to the 750s, maybe the 770s here in ACB. So keep an eye on that potential, uh, you know, move there. So J and J is another one that I'm watching for a potential pullback to get in on a swing trade. We ended up holding that 50 SMA nicely as a support here. We're breaking above the 180 SMA. We're seeing the bullish cross here, the 50 SMA above the 180 SMA. Honestly, everything's looking great right now for a full-on reversal in J and J. I'm interested in taking a long swing trade position in this stock. So. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys ended up trading today. I would love to know. Also, if you guys enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Join our Facebook group and our Discord group 100% free. Those are linked down below in the description box. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.